long towel. I still like these blue towels that they faded so quickly. So I'm like, man. Wah, wah, wah. Okay, I'll throw it in the washing machine. So I'm going to start detangling my hair. And no, it's not fully dry. So I always do it kind of halfy half, like half. I don't detangle under the shower. No, no, no. But I feel like a little bit of wetness when I detangle my hair is good. And guess what? I've been trying it. Okay. I've done this before, but I have to report back. For the last month, I did another henna treatment. It looks kind of red. Um, <laughs> so anyway... For the last month, I've been washing my hair with conditioner, just co-washing, and I like it. And somebody said that if you detangle with a wide tooth comb, also try using the tail part of a rat tail comb. And they suggested that they thought that that would be good for getting out tangles. And I'm like, could that be the case? Maybe because... I guess, I mean, it seems like, well, let's just see. It kind of seems like you could do some work. So this is the part where we start going, okay. We're going to put oil in our hair because I don't believe that coconut oil weighs down my hair. I do Asian, and I'm not talking about East Asian, I'm talking about like West Asian and Indian type ideas on hair. Cause I think a lot of people like, they're like, oh oil, but you have to rinse it out. And I've never rinsed that oil out of my hair. I think if you have thicker hair or just wavier hair, or if your hair is curly, you can do the heavy oils. And yeah, I put coconut oil in my hair and I'm not afraid to use it. In fact, I need it. And if I don't use it, in fact, I don't know. I was talking to my sister and I think she washes her hair too much. That's just my opinion. She just insists on washing it like every other day or something. I'm like, this is too much. This is excessive. You have thick hair. You shouldn't be doing that. I don't think anybody should be washing hair every other day. But, you know, she she insists that she needs to do that. Um, so, yeah, I'm buying shampoo that has oil in it. But I think she would benefit from putting oils in her hair. But she says no. She doesn't like to oil her hair. And a lot of people think that they have to immediately rinse all the oils out of their hair. But no, like... I oil my hair, and throughout the week, as you comb out your hair, you can get a little bit of water in your hair. You could do a scalp rinse. I feel like, no. And now, I'm I'm not using shampoo anymore. I am using conditioner when I wash my hair. For a month now, I've been doing that. Well, I wash my hair every two weeks, like if they're washing. So... But it seems to be working. It seems to be doing well. So this is the process, slow and tedious. Like some people would probably be like, oh my God, <laughs> like <laughs> you have to spend hours doing this. Yeah. If it's not fully detangled by morning, I wear it up. That's what I do. Like, because if I can't get my hair detangled to my satisfaction by the morning, I'll just put it in a bun. And that's really the only time I wear my hair up. Well, I used to wear my hair up like a year and a half ago because I thought, I just thought at that time that I needed to do that because I thought if it was getting longer, it was better to tell you, well, I still would occasionally wear my hair out. The thing that really brought it into that was the quarantine. All of the other people say they have to wear their hair up because of the quarantine, but I don't know. Maybe they're not like I work long shifts with a mask and glasses and I hate tension on my scalp and having more things and more things poking into the back of my head is a no-go for me because I'm not going to become the teapot of fire and a headache on top of it. 
it's just too many. It's just too many things because you have glasses. You have a tight mask. I have to wear a tight mask because I hate loosey goosey masks. I hate a mask that slips. And no, you can't wear your mask under your nose. You can't wear your mask on your nose. It doesn't do a flippy flipper thing. You might as well just not wear your mask if you're going to play cheaty. Or you can't wear it on your chin. If you're around people, you have to wear it all the way up aloft like this high. Or it's not doing anything for you. It's just not, okay? And I really am not a fan of the mask. But I do have to say, I do think... Wearing the mask has kept me safe. I mean, I have to admit that. I mean, I really don't like it. I really hate it. But considering how I work with the public and I'm out having to shop and I'm always wearing my mask in crowds and I haven't got COVID, I mean, I could just be lucky. But I do think that the mask has helped me. And at first I was... Like, I'm not saying I was skeptical of the mask. I just didn't like the mask. And I still don't like the mask. But I'm going to continue to wear it because I'm going to be honest. I I just feel like it's keeping me safe. And I don't love it or anything. But if you have to be around people, like, if I had my eye, look, if it were up to me right now, if money were no object, I would just do my creative stuff from home and happily like probably only go shopping. I would be pretty happy to just live that kind of life if we're going to continue to have pandemics because I was talking to my friend yesterday who works in the medical field and I asked her, I said, regarding the vaccine, it's not going to be a surefire thing, by the way. They're going to have to see how it goes. Um, You'll have to get it maybe frequently. It's not like you get it once and you're okay. People are still going to have to wear masks. They're still going to have to social distance. The whole thought behind the vaccination is it's going to lower the spread of the virus. It's just another tool to try and mitigate it. It's not going to like just make everything go back to normal. And I think the reality is, okay, I really don't like covering my face. Like, I wish people could be honest about that. I hate it. I don't like to. But since that seems to be the only way we can keep ourselves safe and others safe, it makes me not want to go out in public in crowds ever again. And that's just how I feel. Like, a lot of people think, well, they're wearing a mask and they can socialize. And no, you can't puppy pile. And, and you shouldn't probably be talking with your mask on. You should probably be going quiet on your Western front. Think more, talk less. That's kind of how I feel. Like, if you have to be around people, like, I don't like to talk on the mask anyway. I try to minimize it. And I feel like, yeah, it makes me want to say less in public and stuff. And it's probably better. Like, I don't know. Like, maybe we just shouldn't, like, if we're in a public setting, we should just kind of talk less to each other. Like, that's kind of how I feel. Like, look, I'll interact with people, but I definitely don't feel like being chatty Kathy wearing during a pandemic and having to wear a mask. But these are all my thoughts. A lot of people feel differently. But you can't be wearing a mask and then like not social distancing because what's the point then? You're not social distancing. Like a mask is a tool. You still have to try and social distance. Like you can't like people are fist bumping and like I don't know. And just like acting getting close and that's probably why the virus is out of control in California, okay? I don't know. To some extent, yes. Also, too, though, I do think it's... I'm not a skeptic or anything. I think it's weird that it just came back in the fall like they said it would. Hmm. I don't know. I feel like, could we have controlled this better? We don't know. It's a novel virus, and I'm going to just try and say, hey... Maybe being more of an introverted person, not having to go into crowds for the ever, for the duration of your life is probably a good thing, in my opinion. A lot of people probably don't feel that way. If you live in an urban area, that's kind of hard to do. But I don't know. And here is the drawback, okay? This is the bad part. I think people in L.A., I'm not a big fan of L.A., okay? A lot, a lot of people, they think about California and they think it's all L.A. And 
I'm not a fan of LA. I'm going to be honest with you. It's expensive. Many parts of it are overpriced. But now people in LA, I guess they're deciding, oh, they want to move inland, rent inland and buy houses inland because, oh, they're more spacious. And there's an article about this. So they're driving up the rent here in the inland empire. And I'm like, and they already did that up in the high desert where it used to be affordable to live. And California is ridiculous, like price-wise, whatever. I guess you just need to move to a very rural place. And a lot of people kind of look down upon living in a rural place. But I kind of think right now, during this pandemic, you're blessed if you live in a rural place. Like, you kind of are blessed if you're in a position where you don't really have to be out and around people. And I always used to like people, but I just feel like if we're all going to be susceptible to this virus. Oh, thanks. This actually was a cup that somebody gave me for my birthday. And I love palm trees. That's one thing about me. I love palm trees. And I don't know if it's fate or something, but palm trees are like the symbol of the Phoenicians and Lebanon and I'm like a quarter Syrian Lebanese. So I feel like there's just something very, but I love Hawaiian palm trees and California palm trees too, but I feel like it's just an intrinsic part of me. I don't know. So anyway, I just don't feel like it's ever going to be safe to go out in crowds again for me personally, because I guess we'll see how this goes and I'll try to be positive about the whole thing. But just when you talk to people that have a little bit of more background on what's going on right now and people keep saying, oh, the vaccine is going to make everything go back to normal, but it's not like there are probably people that are going to feel like you have to wear a mask all the time for the rest of your life. And some people are okay with that. Some people love to cover their face. I don't feel like I'm myself anymore. And I'm definitely never going to wear a mask on a Zoom meeting. I think that's weird. Like, why should you cover your face, your beautiful face? And that's my opinion. Some people might think that's weird, but I don't like covering my face. I don't want to cover my face. I know we have to do it in public, but if I didn't have to, if I could stay away from people more and not cover my face, I'd be like, yeah, just have a few friends and a smaller group because... That's just my opinion on all that, you know? So I I would say stop your risky behavior. There are people dying of COVID. Talked to my friend yesterday who works in the hospital and she's been safe so far, but it's because she's wearing like a big mask and it cuts into her nose. But, you know, just, yeah, don't, don't go play games in the park. Don't go around people if you don't have to. Like, if you need to work, yes, you need to be around people. But social life, it's caboodle, okay? It's gone bye-byes. This whole thing about meeting in crowds, it's done. It's over. And you can't use the mask as a reason saying that you can do it because it it's a form of protection, but it's not everything. And, like, people play with their masks, so it's not covering all the respiratory droplets in for the mask to be 100% effective, it has to be worn up to here. It can't be below your nose. That's just the truth. Like, people think it can. So, and then another thing, too, is I just don't love it. So, I'm not going to pretend to be, like, all grape jelly jam in favor or something. I feel like, like, honestly, I feel claustrophobic of it. And... What it reminds me of is being perpetually at the dentist where like the few times I had to have my teeth drilled and they tell you to breathe through your nose and I never really could breathe through my nose that well. And I'd feel like I was having a panic attack. And sometimes like I'll be okay for a couple of hours, but the only kind of mask I think I really can wear now, I'm not going to wear a cloth mask. I know they're like for the cloth mask. I'm like, no, I'm going to wear... So I got more paper ones because, and I only wear them either one or two days period. And after two days, you need to throw it out because it's germy and disgusting and you don't want to wear it again. Okay. You can't reuse a paper mask that many times, maybe once or twice. I worked for four hours one day and then I walked home and I went shopping with it and I kept that one. Okay. But the next one I threw out because I was like, if I wear it a long day and I'm sweating in it, cause like for me, 
I'm wearing my glasses and it just makes my nose start running and I start feeling like a teapot, like I'm steaming up and I, it's winter time. And all of a sudden it could be, it could be 49 degrees outside, but I don't need to wear a sweater or long sleeves and I need to wear short sleeves. Like I'm on fire because I'm moving around a lot. So yeah, that's just my experience. And I don't think it's fun, but I guess some people think that's fun. I don't know. Or they just don't care. And some people feel real cool and excited about wearing the mask. Like they feel like, I don't know. Like, I think a lot of people just don't care about it. Like, I'm not going to be one of those people that doesn't wear a mask. If you have to wear the story, yes, I'm going to wear it. And also too, I do want to stay safe, but ideally my dream is like to be affluent this is a pipe dream to where you never really have to go out and be around people i definitely if i were a person of any means and i had the ability to maybe just have to go shopping that's all i do i wouldn't want to be out around people i just wouldn't like because unfortunately I guess we'll have to see how the vaccine goes, which I don't know. I don't think that's going to be a surefire thing, really. And I have reservations about it, but I'm not anti-vax. I am going to take, I thought about it. I'm like, I'm not big on vaccines, but I'm going to take the vaccine because I've taken all my vaccinations and I'm not an anti-vaxxer, but I do have reservations about it. If you have to take it every few months and we don't know the efficacy of it yet, I'm just like, I don't. I mean, we just don't know yet. You know, we'll have to see how it goes. It's not going to make things go back to normal. I know a lot of people think everything's going to, like, just jump back to normal. But it may never be the same again. And I kind of thought that day when I walked home, like, I just thought it would never be the same again. Um, some people are okay with it though. Okay. So like I've talked to some people, there are some people, they seem to think it's no big deal and they kind of have fun with it. Like for some people, there are people out there. They're literally okay with it. Like some people say, okay, let me see. Have you ever talked about your hair history in any of your videos? Okay. I will talk about it again, I guess. Like, I did a hair... I've talked about it a few times. So, like, from the very beginning. The very, very beginning. Like, when it comes to hair. Let me explain. Now, my parents have never had super long hair like me. But, you know, my parents grew up in the 70s. They were hippies, okay? Well, they were young adults in the 70s. But, um... Yeah, so my dad was in the Air Force, and when he got out of the Air Force, you know, they had to have really strict haircuts. I think his first thing that he wanted to do was grow out his hair. And I always joke that my dad looks like the Syrian version of John Lennon because there's this picture of him holding me when I was a baby, and he looks like the Syrian version of John Lennon because he was really obsessed with the Beatles, which is funny now because. I used to love the Beatles because when I was young, my dad listened to them all the time. But then I didn't know this. I thought my mom liked them too. But they said that they didn't really like the Beatles anymore. I was like, that's interesting. I don't know. They like the Moody Blues better now or something. But I used to love the Beatles because, I mean, my dad was mega obsessed with John Lennon. That was like, well, it was one of his favorite. He has different. My dad is very um into music. It shifts a lot. He's more into like some modern music than I am. Like he was mega into Paramore, and I'm like, I was not a, a big thing. I was just not that smitten with Paramore. But he was just like Paramore this, Paramore that, and he would know about all these new bands, and I'd be like, okay, like that's great. I'm glad you like that, and you're very um expansive. But I just have particular tastes in music where I like certain things. But anyway. The backstory is my parents had long hair. My dad had long hair in the 80s. He was an electrician. And this is the fun kind of story about that. Um, yeah, so a lot of people back then didn't like 
men having long hair like it was and there's this still goes on now but like i guess people were offended that he had long hair and he's a little bit darker and uh, yeah they they said that because they said he didn't look white enough when he went to go work on their houses or something which i think is so weird but I'm like okay whatever you know people say some really weird stuff so <laughs> Like he started hiding his hair up in his hat and it was just, he didn't take the best care of it. Okay. But he did like long hair and my mom, she never had as long as hair as me, but typically her hair, most of her life has been longer than shoulder length. There was only one time she cut her hair really short and then she grew it longer. So she had mid back length hair for many, many years. Now it's, I would say to here, cause she just says at this time in her life, she doesn't want to have super long hair and she's never had hair past her waist, but she had long hair. So both my parents were interested in long hair. When I was young, I had long hair. My parents never took me to salon. Um, I never got perms in my hair. My mom would just like braid my hair, put it in pigtails, ponytails. That was the thing, like, because my dad thought long hair looked better. Like, he thought, honestly, my dad didn't think people should cut their hair. Okay. The one thing my dad always said to me when I was young, he believed that power was derived in your hair. He never really took good enough care of his hair for it to grow super long. I think if he treated it better, it could have. Because although I think my hair growing genetics are from my mom's side. I think I get my thickness from my dad's side. But I think my hair growth genetics are definitely from my mom's side because my great grandmother, and I wrote about this in a blog post recently, Julia, um, she was six foot, okay? Like she was really tall, like super tall like they're very tall like i'm not i'm more my dad's side of the family like short five two but she was super tall and she had knee length hair okay so she had maybe cut her hair once in her life is what my second cousin told me she got a perm in the 1930s and she was very upset because she thought they had ruined her hair. So she had long hair during a time when women just didn't. So I get my genetics for growing long hair definitely from my mom's side of the family. And I know that. So, you know, many women used to have very, very long hair, but she had pretty, like, I don't think it was as thick as mine, but fairly thick hair, they said. And, you know, to her knees and she was six foot. So that would definitely be over five feet if she was six feet six foot and her hair was to her knees you know i'm thinking yeah that's definitely over five feet um i'm guessing i mean i don't i didn't know i never met her okay she passed away before i was born so i never met her i just know the stories that my mom my cousin told me about her so i come from a family where i'm probably the first person since my great-grandmother to grow super long hair but it was very acceptable in my family. Like a lot of people go to the salon. They love to get their hair permed. They use hairspray. They get trendy haircuts. That was never really my family. Like, in fact, like even more recently when my mom was still working, somebody told my mom she was a hippie because she had long hair. And I'm just like, oh my God, like really? Because the lady, I guess she was offended that, okay, and my mom's hair was just to hear, by the way, it wasn't like super long, but the lady was offended that somebody older, like in their 60s, would have long hair. And I'm like, what the heck? Like, people are so weird. They're so weird. Like, why would that offend you? Like, you're offended that somebody has long hair and you think, but this is the thing about women, like, okay. It's always women more than men that get down on you for having long hair, okay? It's interesting because women will judge other women. Like, other women do not, like, I think it's kind of changing a bit more. Like, I'm seeing more positivity, and I'm seeing more women be supportive a little bit more lately. But I will tell you, like, a few years back even, like, I just had women make comments to me about how nobody should have long hair. It wasn't necessary to have long hair. And I was thinking, well, gee, like a lot of people get tattoos and I never told someone, well, it's not necessary to get a tattoo when personally, I don't want to get a tattoo. I have no interest in getting tattoos. Okay. So 
that was very acceptable, but for some reason, like growing long hair throws people off their base. Um, so, you know, up in the age of 20, I had long hair, about tailbone length hair, because I came from a family where we didn't really do the salon thing. And my sisters, I think, actually, they wanted short hair, okay, way before I ever did. And I didn't even want short hair in my entire life, really. But, you know, when I was younger, I don't, my hair was pretty, but I wore it loose a lot. So I think it had more damage than, you know, it would have if I had worn it in a braid more. So, because I just didn't know these things. I didn't know these things back in the day. Like, I had wavy hair, and I was always perplexed because my mom said her hair was super oily and she had to wash it, like, every other day, which I don't think she did. Like, now she says she doesn't have to because I think she was overwashing her hair, okay? So, like, she didn't really understand. Like, I kind of had to figure out on my own because I knew my hair was different than theirs because it was all wavy. And my dad actually had curly hair. My dad has curly Syrian Lebanese hair. Like, I thought, I thought it was really cool back before he started wearing his hair up in a hat and it got all just, he was stopped taking good care of it. But it was in really good condition at one time. It was curly on its own. And I was always mesmerized by that. Like, he had these spiral curls like just naturally in his hair and I thought that is just so exciting like I was like I want my hair to do that like I thought that was amazing so I could get my hair to do that if I curled it and it would hold a curl so yeah I always liked that but my mom and my sisters I think too like their hair is straighter like more western European like some people that are western European have curly hair but not as many like and they couldn't really hold a curl in their hair. They just have very straight hair. Um, but, you know, some people do. It's just not as prevalent. Whereas a lot of Israeli people, a lot of Lebanese, a lot of, like, Levantine people have, like, that curly hair. And that was, like, what my dad had, you know. So I have more of a wavy hair. I guess I'm, like, an in-between. So I think I get my hair length. Like, I don't know if this is answering your question about the story. I get my genetics for growing my hair length from my mom's side, but probably like my thickness and texture from my dad's side. Like I'm a little bit of both. It's interesting. Yeah. Like it's an interesting thing. So, but anyway, I came from a family that was very accepting of long hair. Like it wasn't a big deal. Like I've wrote about this before and I've said about this before. Like my dad had friends that had like long hair that were guys. Like one of the, well, one of the guys, I think he was Native American or mostly really. And he had really long hair. His hair was like to his waist, I think. And he wore it like in a braid and it was really like really cool. Like he, he was a hippie too, by the way. Like not, I don't know. Most people like, they like to go hiking and well, my dad and mom were vegans up until I was five, okay? Um, before people were vegan. Like, I, yeah, so growing up, I never ate steak. I've never had a steak, okay? I never ate hamburger. I ate some chicken. And my mom didn't even want to eat meat, okay? Like, she was like, no. Like, she said, I don't want to get pepperoni on a pizza. Like, they wanted to start eating dairy, but that was like, I did not have what you call the typical like typical white bread American upbringing. In fact, I was like multi-ethnic at a time when people weren't, but I think a lot of people in Indiana are all multi-ethnic because Syrians that came to the U S they did what you called rapid fire assimilation where they just assimilated because they came to this country and what was the option? Like some people, they married within their culture, but like in my dad's family. And I think also too, some of it's interesting because I have some third cousins, like they ended up marrying just white American people and they became American, like really quick. Like just, it was that rapid. They learned English super quick. Um, they didn't have anybody to tutor them. Like they just, they had to learn themselves. Like they came here, some of them nine, 10, some of them were adults when they came. A lot of them served in World War One to obtain their US citizenship. Um, 
so that was just the background for them. It was like rapid. Like it's cool when some people from some cultures can keep their culture. But I know like with my grandpa, I don't know. He said that he lost a lot of his culture and he didn't really like, reconnect with it until later in life. So anyway, with the long hair thing, that's just a side story. Um, <laughs> I just thought it was a very interesting like upbringing, I think. To where it was acceptable to have long hair. Like, I didn't have super long hair, but I would say all my life, like, having long hair was a thing. Like, my family likes long hair. They think long hair is pretty. We're not the kind of people that went to the hair salon to get different haircuts. My sisters actually became more interested in that. So, to get back to the, my hair history story, around the age of 20, like, I was in college and I don't know why, like, I was became susceptible to what other people thought about hair. But I just went to school with some girls that lived in the dorms. And they thought that if somebody had long hair, that they didn't look trendy enough and it wasn't cool enough. So around that age, around 20, I ended up cutting my hair to the shoulder length. And I started going to the salon a few times. But I never really felt myself when I was doing all that because, like, you know... It just didn't feel like me. And I'll tell you the thing. I think I didn't start growing my hair really long right away. But the thing that changed my mind was, okay, so you can't actually go to a salon and get a trim and have long hair. But I didn't think you could do that because I was always around women that were part of the trendy crowd that said, no, 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 no. You have to try all these new haircuts and the shorter, the better. And they just were into like trying all these trendy short haircuts. Like I got pretty short at one time. Like I even had a bob up to here with it kind of um, with an undercut. Like I can't believe there was a time in my life I had an undercut, but yeah, I had a bob up to here and an undercut at one time. Like that's just so surreal at, at that one time it wasn't really something I thought was all that exciting but my friend and the hairstylist said that, oh because you have such thick and heavy hair if you get a bob like that short of a bob if you get the undercut it makes it hang better but yeah like so it was very interesting like it was very different and that I just was never feeling me so one time when I went to the salon with my friend, I wasn't getting my hair cut that time, but she was. Um, this was the first time I ever saw a woman, and I would say she had tailbone length hair, and she had the most beautiful hair, and she was standing up, and she was just getting an inch trimmed off her hair, and her hair was just so beautiful, and all of a sudden, I really missed having long hair, and when I saw her, and I saw that she was getting her hair trimmed, I felt sad, because I thought, why... Like, why did I um, succumb to peer pressure to cut my hair when here's a woman with long hair and she seems happy? And yes, she's going to the hair salon, but she's just getting a trim. And seeing her just feel confident doing that made me think, I don't want to be like these women who feel like they always have to do the latest haircut. I don't want to cut off my hair like all the time. I don't want to exploit people in other countries, like getting a hair, like, okay. I don't know if people know this, but like, if you cut your hair a lot and then you're like, well, I can just get extensions um, or I can wear a hair weave or something that is exploitive to women in third world countries. Cause a lot of these women sell their hair and they don't get paid a lot, but there's these corporate hair finders that make a lot of money doing that and a lot of the hair is obtained not always in the best ways like there are some documentaries about it or some people do just want to donate their hair to a temple but there's people in the west making money off these women and it just feels wrong to me i don't know like i just feel like it's exploitive to those women and i'm never telling anybody what to do I don't ever want to tell anybody what to do, but yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of a form of exploitation to those women. Like just FYI, I don't know if people know about like if you research where hair extensions and a lot of wigs and a lot of weaves and things. And I get it. 
But you know, women of any hair texture and type can grow their hair long. And some people are like, well, women with like coily hair or like African type textures can't, but that's not true because there were women in Africa that had very long hair, okay? Um, Europeans came in and like made them think that they should cut their hair. Um, so same like with Native Americans, they should cut their hair. But anybody from any culture can grow their hair long. Some people's genetics might prevent them from growing their hair super long, but everybody can achieve long hair on their own to some degree. And I understand like if you're a cancer patient, like needing a wig, but I just always felt like this whole, I need to change my hair up all the time. And I could just wear extensions if I want long hair. It just feels wrong to me. And I don't know if people know about the exploitive side of long hair, like, like getting extensions like that. You know, I don't think people are aware or have that awareness, you know? So if you want long hair, just try to grow it yourself, I say. Like, and if you are going to wear hair extensions, I would say, like, try to make sure it's being ethically sourced and that the women are being paid fairly. Because I still think it's weird, like, if a temple makes a profit off hair that people donate. Like, it's just creepy. Like, why are they doing that? Like, I don't know. But, you know, everybody has a different opinion on this, and some people seem okay with it. I just don't really feel like, I just feel like, okay, my thoughts on long hair is, I like long hair. I like having long hair, but I feel like people just want to change their hair up so much all the time. And then there's this thing where people say, well, it's just hair. But to, like, a lot of traditional cultures, it wasn't just hair, like, power was derived in your hair like your spirit was in your hair like hair, hair had a spiritual side it wasn't just aesthetics like there was so much more to it so you know there's nothing wrong with cutting your hair but I feel like there's something to be said for growing your hair long like I actually just have really gotten into this and I'm not even like a mega spirit like I do have some spirituality and I'm not a mega spiritual person but there is something very for me okay therapeutic about having long hair for me long hair is like self-care like it's just taking time on yourself and I really love it like so I just came from a background where having just moderately long hair was embraced like in my family but nobody had super long hair since my great grandmother. So that's my hair story, kind of. It's a little bit different, but you know, I'm a very I have a very unique life. And I love my life, to be honest with you, because like just recently, like I I just had this weird experience where somebody told me, oh, like, you tried to make me feel like I wasn't as good as they were, like, somehow, like, their life experiences are better than mine, and I just, so weird, like, people are so weird, like, I don't know, like, people say some weird stuff to you, and you're like, okay, whatever, I've had a very good life, and I love my life, I've, my life has progressed so much, like, I have, had so much progression in my life. I've done so many wonderful things in my life. And I just always say, stand up for yourself, believe in yourself, know yourself. Anybody that tries to downplay any aspect of you is not worth your time of day. And only people who treat you like silver and gold deserve a place at the table for your life. And sometimes I just, it took me a long time. Like sometimes I was always too... How should I put it this way? It's a sleazy business. Like, it's very sleazy. Okay. I, um, okay. So there is a documentary where they're saying that in Vietnam, there were some women that are very impoverished. And there was this Asian man. He had an Asian background. He wasn't just some white guy coming in. And he knew the people and he was actually coming in and paying the women like a fair like wage. Like he wasn't just paying them $2 or something. He would pay them like $100, which for them was a lot of money. 
Hi, how are you doing, Daniel? So they were just saying in that documentary that if you were going to do hair extensions, that you might want to try and find a company that was more ethically sourced. But I do agree with you. I think that hair extensions is a sleazy business. You're right. I just don't want to offend anybody. Like, but honestly, no, like it's weird. Like, why is it that people don't just try to grow their own hair? Why are people putting extensions in their hair? I just don't think it's necessary, but you know, a lot of people take offense to that. And I think that's another reason too, that, okay, I do have more opinions on this. I have a lot of opinions. I think that's why a lot of women get really obsessed with the blunt hemline because a lot of what you see on Instagram, like I have my real hair. Okay. This is my real hair. And there's a lot of women with long hair. That's their real hair. But there are people that will go online and they'll put extensions in their hair to make it look thicker and longer. And they're not being honest with you about that. I'm doing good. How are you? Um, so I think that's why a lot of people get kind of discouraged about their hemline because they're seeing something that might not be real. And actually there's one lady, she has very long hair um, she's from Sweden. She's very smart on this topic. She's made a lot of comments about it. And we were kind of talking about it. And like she said, like when your hair gets longer, you're not going to have some super thick blunt hemline. It's just not possible. It's not feasible. So I feel like a lot of people, like maybe they're deceived because they're seeing women wear hair extensions or they're photo editing things. So this is just my take on it. I think some people get a little too maybe fixated on a really super blunt hemline because they're seeing something on social media that's not real. Or maybe they just like a thick and blunt hemline. I don't know. But I trim my hair, but I don't obsess about my hemline. So there's more hair talk for you. <laughs> and yeah, that's about all I can think of for now. Like hair wise, I can't think of anything like really specific to talk about, but you could watch my hair journey video if you want to see like how my hair has grown over the last 10 years from my late twenties till now. So anyway, yeah, there you go. If that excites you, if, if that interests you, if that's your thing, you know, Oh, calzones are really good. You know, I made calzones once many, many years ago. They're so good. Very, very good. So I'm just like kind of, I'm going through my hair slowly and just like detangling it ah, with my fingers to start with. Like I just try to get the, a lot of the hairs that get caught up in themselves, tingles first. It's one of my strategies. But yeah, that's just kind of a talk that I decided to do with you guys about long hair. I might bring this side forward and start doing some of that too. That is really cool. I worked with a family. I is that the family that has been on Bearcroft TV, like with the kids and the long hair? Um, I do have a pretty healthy hemline. I do, I do. Um, I just think some people are very um well see that's the thing too. The only reason I'm talking about this is because I've seen some women like with really impressive hemlines that I think are really beautiful. And this is just my opinion, but they were like on Instagram or YouTube saying that they thought it wasn't thick enough or straight enough. And I don't know. I thought their hemlines looked good, but they they decided that they wanted to cut back and that seems to be like a popular topic like a lot of women have my sisters cut kept their hair short yes my sisters well no one of them has wet waist length hair but the other one cuts her hair a lot and she doesn't really treat her hair that well because she's into straight ironing it and she dyes it a lot so like she's not really into the whole trying to like I told her I said why don't you try and do henna or something on your hair and she she doesn't do that she's into like 
very she's not super trendy but she's more into doing just mainstream things with her hair where um i'm more into i guess i would say miss middle eastern or ayurvedic type hair care like i go more with the asian influence in hair care and some people just do standard american western like dye your hair go hair salon and that's but my other sister does have waist length hair and yes her hair is long um she never will have her hair as long as me because she always ends up cutting it back to mid back length but i was trying to encourage her to grow it longer and she has really beautiful hair her hair is red and i always tell her she should show her hair online but she's never going to do it because unlike me she doesn't want to have any social media presence of any kind she just will not but she has very beautiful hair and i don't know why she doesn't want to show her hair but that's just her like she's very private so she'll never show it but yeah she has her hair's not as thick as mine but it's white it's at waist length and my other sister has i think her hair's to here but she just does not take good care of it so i think they both would have the potential to have long hair like i do but they don't really have the interest in doing that i like music i like 80s 70s i like um scorpions duran duran led zeppelin um moody blues the eagles doors i like a lot of different things you know i'm kind of eclectic in my music taste but i would say 60s to 80s is my favorite genre and like the more modern stuff i don't know as much about because i just like older music that's just my taste kind of But I think you know a lot about music, Daniel. I think you play music, so you're a musician, so you probably have some good knowledge for us. Yeah, they are really good, but I think, I hope you like maybe do some videos on your music. I'll have to go look and see if you did, because I think that's really cool when people do music videos now i have one friend on here he's very anonymous but he also is in a band and he i mean he doesn't post his band stuff here but i think that's pretty cool like people that play music i'm not musically inclined personally i love to listen to music not play it well you know the only reason i mentioned that is because a lot of people are starting youtube guitar channels so if you are in a band, you might share it sometime. I think, hey, you know what? I understand being shy. I'm not really outgoing either. I like shy people. It's better to be shy, I think, than to be super outgoing. So that's cool. Or maybe it's just because I relate to shy people more. So I, even though I do YouTube, like, and I can talk on camera, it's because I've done it for a while. I'm not, like, Miss Social Butterfly. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, I'm just pulling all the hair out of the knots to try and kind of detangle it. Do, do, do. So, I probably should end this here or I will not go to sleep and I will be up until the wee hours of the night just rambling on and not really concentrating on trying to detangle my hair. But I just thought I would share. And by the way, I went to UC Riverside, so I wear my UC Riverside shirt sometimes. <laughs> oh, I understand. Like, I get that. But that's really cool. I like, like, small bands that play at venues and things like that. That is really awesome. If I'm, I don't know if you guys still play, but it would be cool to see you guys sometime. If you do. Oh, you were in a band. Well, maybe you'll start up again. Let me know if you do start your band again. I would love to see it if you ever share anything. But I hope you guys have a great night. Thanks for watching.